Hello and welcome to worship today. It's Sunday, April the 10th of 2022, Palm Sunday. I invite you to join with me in the responsive call to worship as we continue to share the liturgies from Presbyterian World Service and Development. During Lent, we remember that when life seems to change direction, God is offering a new way of being. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey as the Messiah. Instead of entering triumphantly as a victorious king, he came humbly offering peace. The crowd would change from shouting Hosanna to crucify. They hoped that the Messiah would come to defeat the Romans, but Jesus came to defeat sin and death itself. Let us pray. Holy One, blessed are you, for you come among us offering new life. We recognize that we can be blinded by our expectations and are too often unwilling to see your different and better ways. Open us to the truth that there is more to your reality than we can see or understand. In the name of Christ, who is able to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. Our first hymn today is This Is The Day. Let us join our hearts in our prayer of adoration and our voices in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Holy God, creator, savior, and spirit of all life, holy three and holy one, in you we confront the mystery of mercy and the courage of compassion. As we face the cross on which Christ gave himself, we confront your willingness to die for us so that we might find new life. As the Spirit speaks to us through the story of your amazing love, spilled out in the blood of Christ, our hearts are moved to praise you. Words cannot express our awe, the grief and gratitude stirring within us for all you have given us and for all you will give us through such unspeakable love. Merciful God, filled with wonder and praise, we acknowledge to you how often we fall short of your purposes for us. Hear us as we confess our sins together. We confess it is easier for us to follow the crowd than follow Christ. We prefer to avoid conflict rather than stand up for your mercy and understanding. We allow strident voices in our times to drown out your wisdom and truth. Forgive us, O God. Fill us with the courage to take up our cross and follow Jesus, even when the cost to follow is high and reputations are at stake. For we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 
Friends, the Apostle Paul wrote, This saying is sure and worthy of our full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It doesn't matter how big or how small our sins, God's forgiving love in Jesus Christ can cover them all. Trust that in Christ we are forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with each other. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join with me in our prayer for understanding as we approach the word. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we hear the stories of Jesus' final days again, help us listen as if we had never heard them before. By the power of your spirit, engage us, shock us, and pierce our hearts so that your undying love overwhelms us with mercy and grace through Christ, your living word. Amen. We'll sing together the first three verses of the Palm Sunday hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. First reading is Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love endures forever. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surrounded me on every side, but in the name of the Lord I cut them off. They swarmed around me like bees, but they died out as quickly as burning thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hand, join in the fest festal procession. Up the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. 
You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our second reading is Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. The Triumphal Entry. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell them, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, his owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have been walking through Lent in these past weeks, making the road as we go. We have walked in the wilderness, in prayer, with others, with hope, and now we take the first steps of walking through Holy Week. Throughout this journey, we have encountered obstacles and bumps in the road, but by God's grace, we have kept going. And here we are on our way to Jerusalem with Jesus. We have a difficult week ahead, but we will persevere. Even when it seems like hope has been destroyed, God will keep writing the story to bring us a resolution we know is coming, and yet it surprises us with joy every year. Throughout the season of Lent, we have been sharing devotions written by the Reverend Terry McDowell Ott, editor of the magazine Presbyterian Outlook of the PCUSA. Here is what she writes about today's part of the story, Jesus' arrival in Jerusalem. As we make this road into the holy city of Jerusalem, we walk alongside Jesus riding a colt, his disciples shouting praises, making a scene and drawing a crowd. Across the city, another powerful leader makes his entrance. In the book, The Last Week, a day-by-day -day account of Jesus' final week in Jerusalem, the authors describe in vivid detail the procession of Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Idumea, Judea, and Samaria. It was standard practice for governors to show up in cities during major festivals. Pilate wasn't coming to help celebrate Passover, though, but to maintain order and squash any rebellion that might arise among a crowd unhappy with their Roman oppressors. Pilate's procession into Jerusalem was a showy parade of strength. Pilate led the way on a huge war horse, followed by his cavalry, followed by his foot soldiers. According to the authors of that book, they'd be dressed in leather armor and helmets, carrying weapons, banners, and golden eagles mounted on poles. It was a display of both imperial power and imperial theology. The Roman emperor was not simply a political ruler. Augustus, the greatest of Roman emperors, was believed to be the son of Apollo. Augustus was referred to as son of God, Lord, and Savior, and his successors continued to bear these divine titles. Given this context, Jesus' entry to Jerusalem appears more like a show of planned resistance than a humble parade. The danger and tension rise in this narrative as one son of God enters Jerusalem from the east and another from the west. 
The road Jesus is making confronts and contradicts the power of the world. Jesus' way is the road of humility and peace, not intimidating strength and terrorizing power. I remember several years ago when I was on my way, pardon me, on my way home from Toronto on the 401, it was during the conflict in Afghanistan and when any Canadian military personnel were killed and their remains returned to Canada, crowds would gather on the overpasses along the route, the Highway of Heroes, to honor the fallen. As I drove that day, I saw first responder vehicles with lights quietly flashing, flags waving, and people standing solemnly as the procession of vehicles passed by. Vehicles on the highway pulled over out of respect. It was a road of humility and peace on which the troops were returned home. After having given their lives in a situation of intimidating strength and terrorizing power. It was a powerful experience, a deeply moving one I will never forget. And yet, where is peace? Did these dedicated people die for nothing? When we see the Taliban take over again, what purpose was there in trying to create peace in that land? We could ask the same thing about Jesus. The Reverend Dr. Richard Topping, President and Vice Chancellor of the Vancouver School of Theology and the St. Andrews Hall Professor of Studies in the Reformed Tradition, writes about the peace for which we wait in his contribution to the school's Lenten series of devotions. He reflects on Jesus' entry to the city and the crowds shouting of praise, Blessing, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Topping writes, Jesus weeps, weeps over Jerusalem saying, would that even today you knew the things that make for peace. All the elements are not in place. What is needed to root peace in God's good creation hasn't yet taken place. Peace will come to our hearts, our lives, our world, but not through a parade. First, the crooked will be made straight, the rough places smooth, a life spent, bloodshed, creation will shake to its foundations, then peace will come. It's an ancient tradition of the church that the palms which are given to churchgoers on Palm Sunday are saved for most of the year. And then according to custom, they are collected and burned. The ashes from the palms get used to smudge a cross on the forehead of believers on Ash Wednesday. Jesus won't accept acclamation from this crowd. He knows the crowd. It makes him weep. They want him to cast off their Roman overlords who occupy their land. They are religious people who want to make use of God. Now that God's Messiah has come, we have the upper hand, they think. And thrown him, and it's our day in the sun. Now is the time not for peace, but for retaliation. In our tit-for-tat world, the coming of our champion can only mean our turn to rule. The slave changes places with the slave master, but it is still slavery. That's not peace. Hanging on the cross, suffering as an innocent victim, writes theologian Miroslav Volf. Jesus took upon himself the aggression of the persecutor. He broke the vicious cycle of violence by absorbing it taking it upon himself. He refused to be sucked into the reflex of revenge, but sought to overcome evil by doing good, even at the cost of his life. Jesus will bring peace. It will come after the palm branches are yellow in the streets of Jerusalem. It will come after our Palm Sunday branches wilt. They will be burned ashen and smeared in the shape of a cross. O oh God, give us that peace that only you can impart through Jesus Christ our Lord. As we are invited to the table today, the Lord's table, we do so with the week ahead looming. 
It is a dark road we will walk. Praise will turn to hatred. Shouts of welcome will turn to cries of crucifixion. And Jesus will go willingly to the cross. He will go to bring peace. He will go to overcome the power of violence and fear with grace and peace. This meal prepared for us out of God's great and unending love for us is so much more than bread and cup. It is a reminder of Jesus' grace and peace, a reminder of what he has done for us. We still wait for peace in this world. Violence and fear still fuel so much conflict and hatred. Betrayal and oppression still threaten to destroy hope. Abuse and prejudice still devastate lives. Grief and sorrow still break hearts. And yet we walk the road of Holy Week knowing that all of this will be conquered in the events of next weekend. We travel knowing the peace and grace that waits for us is not something we can find in the world but that only Jesus can give. We walk through Holy Week, through the wilderness, in prayer, with others, with hope, and above all, in faith. Walker, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Walker, there is no road. The road is made by walking. Walking, you make the road, and turning to look behind, you see the path you never again will step upon. Walker, there is no road, only foam trails on the sea. Amen. We'll sing the last two verses of Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Sisters and brothers in the Lord, as we draw near to the Lord's table, consider the great benefits of this sacrament for those who come in faith and repentance as those who hunger and thirst after Christ and all that he brings. Those who, putting their trust in Jesus, long to lead a new life and to mature with the gifts of grace are invited and encouraged to come to the table of the Lord for their spiritual refreshment and renewal of strength. Come, the Lord welcomes you. Our communion hymn is Let Us Break Bread Together.
I invite you to join in the great prayer of thanksgiving. The responses for you will be on your screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Gracious God, we praise your holy name, giving thanks to you with our lips and our lives. For the power and mystery of your word by which you created us and called us to yourself, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you took flesh and lived among us through your Son, Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. For the power and mystery of your word by which you choose common people, forming the church to be the body of Christ in the world, we give you thanks. Therefore, with all your faithful people from every time and place, we join with the whole creation to lift our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Faithful God, we offer you our praise and thanks as we return to you these holy gifts of bread and cup. Remembering our Lord's command to take and eat, we ponder the mystery of his promise, that in this meal we are joined to him and to one another as a holy people. We offer you our praise and thanks for Jesus Christ, who took flesh and lived among us, was baptized for our sins, and taught us your way of truth. Amid shouts of Hosanna, your son Jesus entered Jerusalem for the redemption of the world. Betrayed by friends, rejected by all, he accepted the shame of the cross. By his suffering and death, he defeated the power of death, becoming for us the source of eternal life. And now, O God, we celebrate with deepest thanks his victory over death, his presence with us in this feast, and his promise of a new creation as we affirm the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of grace and power, you invite us to share in mysteries that are beyond our understanding. In simple trust, we seek the transforming power of your spirit on this gathering of your people, on these words and actions, on this bread and cup in order that, by the miracle of your grace, we may be united to Christ and to one another, one in body, one in spirit, one in faith. This sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we offer to you, gracious God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And as he taught us, we now pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this, remembering me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. Every time you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Lori and I are going to share in the elements of communion together, and I invite you now to partake of the elements that you have prepared in your home as we join in this special meal as a community. The body and blood of Christ given for us all.
I invite you to join with us in the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Eternal, Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, I invite you to share in the responsive dismissal. As the drama of this week unfolds, are you prepared to come to the table and share a meal with Christ, whose life is poured out for you? By the grace of God, we are. Are you prepared to serve one another as Christ has served you? By the grace of God, we are. Are you prepared this week to watch with Christ and pray in the moments of quiet and contemplation? By the grace of God, we are. Are you prepared to follow Jesus into the dark night of betrayal, chaos, and death? By the grace of God, we are. Are you prepared to seek new life and the resurrection? By the grace of God, we are. May we know the grace of God to help us with these things. By the grace of God, we will. May the blessings of God the Father Almighty and Jesus the Son and the continuing presence of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you this day, throughout this week, and always. Amen. Our closing chorus today is Go Now in Peace. <laughs>